We take a look at Korean companies that turn crisis into new opportunities. Hello, welcome to Korea 4.0. I'm your host, Chong Seo-mi. The second half of the year 2019 was rather a challenging year for the Korean economy, with the U.S.-China trade disputes as well as Japan's retaliation. Now, on today's Korea 4.0, we take a look at the economic outlook for the country as well as the prospects of the global economy. The year 2019 was an eventful one for the Korean economy. Trade disputes between South Korea and Japan began in August of 2019, and we saw a stagnancy in the semiconductor industry. 2019 was a dormant year for South Korea due to the deterioration in investments and the export index. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, also known as the OECD, stated that South Korea's economic slowdown was due to the decrease of the global economy as well as the trade disputes between South Korea and Japan and the United States and China. It added that it was also due to the uncertainty of exports and investments. Then, which direction will the Korean economy head towards in 2020? Unlike the previous year, many are giving positive reviews and we can hope for an economic recovery in 2020. Experts say a boost in the household net income will help relieve consumer sentiment. We can see a recovery in the stagnant world economy in the new year. Let us now talk in depth and see if the Korean economy can recover from last year's stagnancy in this year. Now, Professor Sewan Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to our show. My pleasure. Now, before we talk about the economic outlook for the new year, 2020, I think it's necessary for us to go over the previous year. How would you summarize the year 2019 in terms of economic growth and global economies in general? It looks that global economy is under a recessionary cycle, uh, except the United States. Uh, economy does not go up and go down forever. Uh, since there was economic recovery after 2008's uh, economic crisis, uh, we are located under a recessionary cycle of the global economy. But one thing very particular of the last year uh, that accelerated economic recession was uh, Brexit of the UK and uh, US-China trade war. Right. Both uh, really decreased global income and, and, and global trade. Then how would you assess the Korean economy for the year 2019? Korean economy was uh, pretty weak than expected before. Uh, uh, the economic growth rate of uh, Korea would be uh, less than 2% on annual basis. And that is much lower than actually than expected in the previous year. Uh, particularly, in domestic investment was pretty weak, uh, along with a uh, big fall of the uh, residential construction. And the uh, export of the Korea was uh, very weak too. We saw uh, over uh, 13 months straight uh, decrease of the export uh, from 2018. But positive part of the Korean economy of the last year was consumption was pretty robust. We saw a positive increase of the consumption. Since consumption covers almost 60% of the total GDP of the nation, we have a positive hope for recovering economy uh, this year if consumption is stimulated by uh, government. Now, in the year 2019, we saw this downward trend uh, in terms of GDP growth, especially in South Korea. And many people want to know if the economy will see a rebound in the new year. So major economic institutions like IMF or OECD, how are they viewing the uh, economic outlook for the 2020? Good news is that 
economic institutions like IMF and OECD's uh, forecast of this year's economic growth is slightly uh, better than that of the last year. For example, uh, IMF forecast of the 2020's economic growth is about 2.7%, and that is 0.2% uh, increased from that of the last year. But OECD's forecast of this year's economic growth is about 2.9%, which is exactly the same as last year's uh, global economic growth. So broadly speaking, we can say that uh, this year's uh, global economic growth is slightly better than that of the uh, last year's. So what are the reasons behind that? Well, uh, we have actually some positive signs of global economic growth for this year. Uh, they are uh, something less burdened from uh, UK's Brexit and, and China-US uh, trade war. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that in the last months, uh, uh, US and China agreed on phase one deal uh, uh, on US-China uh, trade. And that gave a really positive sign on global uh, economy. Uh, secondly, Boris Johnson won the UK's uh, election, election. Is, uh, in the last month. So technically speaking, UK can get out of the EU or Brexit uh, gracefully uh, by the end of the January. So these two uh, factors gave uh, positive signs on global economic growth. But there are still ongoing worries exactly. in terms of you know, whether it's going to be a mini deal or no deal Brexit. Right. Mm -hmm. We never know what's going to happen, of course, in the future. I have to say that there is a long way to go about the uh, U.S.-China trade deal. So this is only temporarily deal at this moment, but uh, I believe that there's going to be a long bumping road until the end of the uh, final deal between U.S. and uh, China. Well, the news always comes out, and whenever something comes out, the markets you know, react so drastically to those. So we do have to uh, keep an eye out on those right. issues as well. Right. Now then, um, my next question would be, which direction will the Korean economy head towards for the new year? I mean, you already said it's going to be sort of more of a muted growth for yeah. the year 2020. How are the economic experts viewing? Uh, we have quite a few uh, positive factors on the Korean economy and this, at the same time negative factors on the Korean economy. From inside of the country, uh, we have pretty weakened uh, domestic investment from uh, private uh, corporations. So without reviving uh, domestic investment, uh, it is going to be extremely difficult to recover the economy. And also, uh, exports is declining uh, very quickly in the last year. So it is very important to, to recover export of the Korean uh, economy. But positive signs are there is high expectation about the recovery of the uh, cheap export, which is a number one export item of the Korea. Cheap export covers over 15% of the total uh, Korean export. So we expect that uh, there will be increase of the export of the chips from the middle of this year. And also, uh, U.S.-China trade deal has been lessened. Uh, the shock of that tension has been lessened, so that also gives a positive impact on Korean economy. So overall, uh, I believe that Korean economy will be slightly better than that of the last year, uh, thanks to uh, uh, recovering export and recovering domestic uh, demand. Well, let's now talk about exports, which lead the Korean economy, but also which have been affected quite drastically by the U.S.-China trade war, as well as Japan's retaliation towards South Korea. So what are your views on the current economic indicators on exports? As you said, one of the largest concerns of the Korean economy in the last year was quickly declining export. Uh, we saw that uh, until the end of last year, uh, there was a uh, 12 straight month uh, decrease of the export. Mm -hmm. But since US-China trade conflict has been lessened, and since also uh, Abe administration's uh, export restrictions on Korea is lessened, I think the Korean export have something momentum, positive momentum of the increase for this year. 
Uh, other major variables, economic variables, like exchange rate is another important variable. But I believe that $1 exchange rate uh, will be slightly increased for this year at the level of 1,200 won per dollar. So that means Korean won will be slightly depreciated against US dollars. And that's going to be a, a positive impact on Korean export. Inflation is another very important figure. And actually, we do not have any concern about inflation because it is pretty much stabilized at 1% level. Actually, that is uh, much lower than Bank of Korea's inflation target of the 2%. But related to that, if inflation goes down below 1% level, we have to uh, pay more attention to inflation because that has a possibility to go down to negative inflation or, by definition, deflation. Uh, the last important variable for the Korean economy is employment. But I believe that this year, uh, employment is not much increasing because government generated temporary job uh, employment is limited because of government budget situation. Like Professor Kim said, we will take a look at various variables and dormant risks that might influence the Korean economy. So we'll be right back after watching this short clip. It looks like we'll see an improvement in the global economy in 2020. However, some representative unstable global issues have not yet been resolved. Experts say such unstable global issues can have a negative impact on the South Korean economic structure, which is weak to variables. One key variable that could have a negative impact on the South Korean economy will be the trade disputes between the United States and China. Both parties have come to a phase one trade deal. The results of the phase two and the phase three trade deals can have an adverse effect on the American and the Chinese economies. And thus, it could be an important variable on South Korea, which relies heavily on exports to the U.S. and China. The United Kingdom's no-deal Brexit is another unstable factor that can worsen the global economy. If the EU is heavily hit by the no-deal Brexit, then it can cause a ripple effect in the global economy for 2020. The South Korea-Japan trade disputes have been ongoing since mid-2019. It's predicted to be another unstable factor that impedes the global economic growth. Last year, the International Monetary Fund, also known as the IMF, announced the World Economic Outlook for the year 2020. The organization pointed out the South Korea-Japan trade disputes as a risk factor that will drag down the economy and cause chaos in the global supply chain. If the trade disputes between South Korea and Japan are prolonged, then it can have an adverse effect on the global economy. Along with external variables which can influence the global economy, we must keep an eye on stocks, real estate, and the labor market, which can become possible risks. Internal variables chosen by most pundits are the decrease in Cosby and the fluctuation in housing prices caused by the real estate measures announced by the South Korean government at the end of 2019. The job market has improved compared to the drastic drop in employment last year. It is still uncertain if the job market will grow or not. The South Korean government publicized the blueprint for the 2020 economic policies. Out of the internal and external variables, the government stated that five major things to watch are real estate, household debt, the financial and the foreign exchange markets, trade, and the structural adjustment. 
the government added that it'll take action and carefully monitor these five risks. We will need to wait and see if the South Korean government's measures can control the domestic economy's internal and external risks. There are still growing concerns about the Korean economy, and we do have to take a look at various risks and factors that might influence the Korean economy. I, and I think one of the most important risks that we do need to take a look at is the global trade disputes. I mean, with the U.S. and China trade war, as well as U.S. you know, going against the EU, mm -hmm. we are seeing all these trade disputes at the moment worldwide. So what's your view on this? U.S.-China trade uh, conflicts is not a simple uh, economic uh, problem. Uh, U.S. history uh, professors are saying that this time's U.S.-China conflict is a history collision of two different systems. So it can't be uh, discontinued until two sides fully understand each other. But the problem is the largest victims of uh, U.S.-China trade conflict is Korea. So we have to pay big attention on, on the, on the pro progress of the conversation between two countries. Mm -hmm. And according to pre uh, previous careful studies on the relation between Korean export and Chinese export, when Chinese export decreases by 10%, naturally Korean export decreases by 1%. So declining Chinese export has a big negative impact on Korean export until the U.S.-China deal is completed. Now, amidst all this, the biggest news of the final month of the 2019, I believe, is how U.S. President Donald Trump signed the so-called phase one deal with China. And how has that impacted the South Korean economy as well as the South Korean market? It does have positive impact on Korean economy and global economy, too. Uh, the fact that Washington and Beijing agreed on a certain level of trade agreement have a really good sign on a global economy, including particularly including Korea. We are saying like this, the fact that two countries are sitting together means something positive to global economy because when there is a serious conflict between the two countries, uh, there is a huge wave of economic waves, negative waves on other countries. But there still is a long way to go until the final and complete uh, deal between the two countries. Right. I believe that there, there will be lots of ups and downs and bumping roads. Mm -hmm. So since we are pretty much affected by these two countries' conversation, we have to uh, pay big attention and, and get prepared on uncertainties of these uh, two countries' uh, conversation. Well, from the Korean economic perspective, we also do need to talk about Japan and mm -hmm. Korea trade disputes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Japan's export regulations would be also one of the most important factors that we do need to think about. And talks between South Korea and Japan took place mm -hmm. uh, at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'll be able to see an improvement between the two countries this year? I think so. Uh, actually, when Abe administration gave uh, uh, export restrictions on Korea last year, that was a really a shock and surprise to everybody in Korea. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, Japan's export restrictions on Korea did not much affect Korean economy because Abe administration gave a, a export permission to key chemicals from Japan. So since, as you said, uh, the, the conversation between two governments has been started at both of the high level and working level, mm -hmm. I believe that there should be something improvements on this issue. And another positive factor about this situation is uh, Japanese economy is cooling down quickly from last year. Uh, last year they had a, like a less than 1% economic growth, pretty weak. So given that situation, Abe administration is known as extremely uh, business friendly uh, government. So I don't think Abe administration will impose another uh, trade uh, restrictions on Japanese producers uh, because that destroys Japanese uh, companies' business and global value chain at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
then what are some other variables that might cause friction or uncertainties around Korean economy? Well, for this year, the investment, domestic investment, is the key uh, factor of the Korean economy. Uh, without uh, reviving domestic investment from private firms, there won't be easy economic recovery. And another a big concern is a Korean housing market bubble. We say that in the Korean financial market, there is like over 1,200 trillion won of the cash in the area of the uh, Korea. So given that huge liquidity or money in the market and bubbles in the housing market, we never know how Korean housing market turns out for this year. And that, it keeps going up. Exactly. So that's the second, the most important risk factor uh, inside of the country. Uh, from outside of the country, I think, uh, the oil price is a big issue. Oil price? Yes, because that is the one of the most important uh, natural resources in, in modern economy. And there is a possibility that uh, major economies turns down more seriously, like Japanese economy, Chinese economy, and European economy can go down further for this year. So that's the another uh, risk factor uh, of the Korean economy. In addition to that, we have quite a few actually geopolitical risk factors. Mm -hmm. Two major geopolitical risk factors are Hong Kong's protest against the Beijing and the U uh, North Korea's uh, missile experiment with atomic bombs. And they are really a serious geopolitical risk factor for the Korean economy. Now, despite all these growing concerns over all these uncertainties and risk factors, there is going to be a positive recovery in the semiconductor sector, and that's been said by many institutions and economic experts. So do you think we are going to see some a major rebound in the semiconductor sector as well as some other industries as well? I believe so. Uh, market's high ex expectation is uh, global chip market will be recovered from the middle of this year. And uh, if that really happens, uh, that's going to be a big positive momentum on Korean economies export and economic growth together. Chip export is really uh, important to ex export of the Korea, which covers o over 15% of the total export. Right. Automobile uh, export is reviving from the December of the last year. Mm -hmm. So I believe that automobiles and auto parts together increased export for this year. So these are two positive signs of the Korean export. And another positive signs of the Korean economy is uh, even though economy was pretty weak in the last year, the consumer's uh, consumption was pretty robust. Uh, we have uh, like over 0.5 uh, increase of the domestic consumption uh, on monthly basis last year. Mm -hmm. So this is very unusual uh, situation under a uh, weakening economy. So there should be something more uh, stimulation and promotion on domestic consumption from government. If that is realized, uh, we can say that the consumption, which is the largest part of the GDP, uh, will be revived for this year. Now, today we talked about many different issues and we touched upon many foreign as well as local variables that we need to think about. Before I let you go, I want to ask you this final question. So what kind of measures should the South Korean government take uh, in order to cope with all these uncertainties as well as risk factors? Well, that, that is really a tough question, but I believe that governments will on economic policy, and secondly, well-organized uh, government policies are very important. Uh, the solution of recovering Korean economy is very simple. Uh, expansionary uh, monetary and fiscal policy, which means that government should be spending more money and government should be providing uh, more liquidity or money and decreasing interest rate. But implementing this package of expansionary policies on other story. For increasing government's uh, expenditure, uh, government has to have uh, agreement from people because more government spending goes to more debt of the government. Mm -hmm. So it is time for government for 
exercising the leadership and agreements uh, from people in, in a very friendly way. So I think that's the only way that we can get out of the recession as soon as possible for, for this year. Well, with what you said, with the establishment of right measures from the government as well as the support and growth from the Korean companies, we hope to see a stable growth for the Korean economy in the year 2020. Thank you so much for your time today and thanks for sharing your wonderful insight with us. Thank you for having me today.